Hello students, in this video I'm going to show you how to use Google Sites to make your web portfolio. So if you've already started one, please don't start all over, just keep adding to that one or make changes as needed. But if you haven't started and you're not really sure where to begin, I'm going to go from the very beginning steps of how to start your Google Site. The nice thing about Google Sites is that it's simple. They have updated a lot of the design so it looks a lot nicer than it used to and it's a little bit easier to use than it used to be. So it works really nicely with your Google Drive. So if you have all of your artifacts or your examples of work from your program in folders in your drive, that will make it much easier for you to begin this process. So if you haven't done that already, I suggest you do that. So I'm gonna share my screen and show you how to start. And as I mentioned, you should have a folder created with all your artifacts. Remember, artifacts are examples of your work throughout your program from different subject areas. You must have at least one English and at least one math, and you should have your philosophy paper. Those, those are three, and then the other five are whatever you choose, any other subject area you want. Put them all in one folder. Uh, that makes it a lot easier for you to find it, and just label it portfolio or something like that. So I put some uh, example artifacts in here. These are just plain documents and you can see all I've done is write artifact on it because it's an example. But I've uploaded some Word documents, uh, a JPEG which is an image file, and then a PowerPoint just so you can see the range of things that we can use in our Google site. So once you do that you're going to open another tab and you're just going to go to sites.google.com. If you're logged into your Google account it should take you right to something like this. If you don't have a Google account it will ask you to make one. I think pretty much everybody has one by now. Uh, you do have one with your Dominguez Hills email. I would suggest that you make one on your own uh, with your own Gmail if you haven't already because that will help you keep this stuff going and keep access to it if you leave Dominguez and you want to look at it later and then they deactivate your email and you won't be able to get to it. So I would suggest just keeping your, uh, your own personal Google Drive, make a folder with all your stuff like I mentioned, put it all in there. If you have it on your hard drive on your computer and folders on your computer somewhere, upload them into your drive because it'll make it a lot easier for your Google site. So now that I've got this, I'm at the sites page. I have a big gallery of templates that I can pick from and uh, they've gotten a lot better. In the past, Google sites were kind of ugly um, and real plain looking, but now they look pretty nice. So they have a range of different types. You know, you can use a portfolio. Um, you can actually use any of these. It doesn't have to be the portfolio even though you're making a portfolio, you're gonna be able to change everything on there. So it doesn't matter which one you pick, but I'm gonna choose this one just as the example. So once I pick my template, it's gonna load. Now notice you can also pick a blank one if you wanna just start from scratch and put more work into designing it yourself. But for the sake of this example, I'm assuming that you might wanna just use a template. So I'm gonna do that. Okay, so once I get in here, you're gonna see a couple things. First, you're gonna see that I can click in any of these boxes and make changes, which is great, right? So I'm gonna put my name on here. Um, I'm gonna add some information about myself eventually, put a, maybe a little bio, because you're gonna wanna have some information about yourself. You're gonna wanna have a picture of yourself. Um, so this picture right here, um, it's fine, but I need to replace it because it's not me, right? So notice how easy it is. I can just click on it, and then I get some choices here. I can crop or I can change it, but I want to change this picture and I want to select a new image or upload an image. If I already have it saved on there, I'm just going to upload it. Now this time I have it on my desktop, so I'm going to pick this picture of myself and I'm going to upload it. Oh, that didn't turn out so great, so now I got to I gotta figure out what I need to do to fix it, right? So I'm going to have to um, crop it maybe, okay? So I might want to make it a lot smaller. Um, I'm gonna adjust it. This picture didn't work out so great, so I need to, I need to try and, oops, there we go. <laughs> I need to make some changes to it, and I can resize it. Um, this one might just be a bad choice because it's such an odd shape compared to this box right here. So a couple things I could do is I could delete the things around it, and I could make the area bigger if I really wanted to, or I could just find a different picture, okay? Um, so I can add in new images if I want. Let's say I wanted to try it again, okay? And I'm gonna see if I can put it in a different place. So it takes some time playing around with it. Oh, that turned out okay, it's still a little bit blurry, so it might not be the best picture, but on your own, you can make uh, changes like that. Decide what you wanna do. So that's way too big, so I don't like that. 
Um, notice I can move it around um, and it's kind of got like a little grid, okay? So wherever I move it, it's gonna kind of snap into that grid, um, which is nice, it makes it kind of easy. It's, um, it doesn't give you a ton of choices, so it makes it a little bit uh, limited as far as if I wanna change things around. It doesn't give me a lot of choices as far as making those changes, but it's simple and it's easy to do, right? So that's how you add things and change things. And I can do the same thing by adding in different images, documents, uh, whatever I want by clicking on these boxes and uploading something, okay? Now, notice that it gives me a couple pages. It gives me a home page, an about page, and a project page. Well, that's not what I want in my web portfolio, so I've got to change that. So I go to pages, and I might want the about page, sure, maybe I'll write a little bit about myself, or maybe I'll put my teaching philosophy there. That's fine. But this project page, that's not what I want. I want to have actually different subject areas. Now I can choose to put them all on one page here and list every one of my artifacts if I wanted to, or I can divide them into different pages by subject area. That's what most people do because it makes it a little bit easier to maneuver and help people who are looking at the portfolio find stuff. So I'm going to change this actually. If I click on those little dots, I can come down here and I can delete or I can change it. Okay, if I click on properties, I'm going to change the name. I'm going to make this my English page. And notice it made the change right up there. Click done. Now I've got an English page. And if I want to add another page, which I do because I want other subject areas too, I'm going to hit this plus button and I'm going to make my math page. Okay, now I've got a math page and I can keep doing this to get all the subject areas that I want. Remember for your portfolio, you're going to want to make sure that you have at least one English artifact, at least one math artifact, your uh, teaching philosophy has to be on here somewhere. And then the other five artifacts can be whatever you choose. So maybe I want a dance page or a science page or a PE page or history, whatever you want is fine, doesn't matter, okay? You can even put things like lesson plans or uh, stuff you've done in liberal studies too. So you could have a page for liberal studies if you wanted to. Most people add their option in there as well, whatever that is, because you took a lot of classes in that area. So once I've done that, over here on the side, when I click on the page that I want to work on, I can go to insert, and that's what allows me to make changes on that page. So I can pick a layout if I want to. If I like certain layouts, I can pick that, um, and it'll just keep adding whatever I click on there, right? And I can also delete them if I don't want it. Okay, so it's real simple over here on the side. I just hit that little trash can, and that gets rid of it. Um, that's the easy thing about it, is that you can just plop things in there and delete them if you don't like it. I can also add specific things over here below if I wanna throw some slides in there or um, I can throw documents, I can divide things and move it around. Um, so you can play with those options or you can just keep the very simple options it gives you and just add your artifacts uh, just like that. So let me show you how that would work. Let's say this is gonna be one of my artifacts. So the nice thing about having all your stuff on your Google Drive is you can come here from Drive and you can select your folder that you've all you've got it in. So I'm gonna go to CSUDH, I'm gonna go to LBS 400 where I have it saved, and I have my web portfolio example folder already. And um, I, I have a picture, I just found this random picture of a Dominguez student, um, but let's pretend that's me and I did a project. Um, so I could say this is my math project. And then I might underneath write my reflection about what I've learned in my math courses and how I'm prepared to use this, um, this knowledge in my own future classroom, right? So everything has to have artifacts and then a reflection for that subject area, explaining what those artifacts are and how you're gonna be prepared to teach. Again, if I decide I don't like this, I can delete it, it's really easy. I can add something in there if I want. I can make changes pretty simply, okay? Um, be aware that uh, this is probably the easiest option if you're used to Google Drive and you've been using it, you already have your stuff in there, this is really nice. I can add extra images if I want, okay? Um, if I pick something on here, it's going to plop it into whatever box I had prepared, right? So um, you might have to mess around with it a little bit and get used to it, but it is pretty simple to use, okay? So once I've done that and I've got everything prepared the way I want it, I have to push this publish button. Think of publish as save. When I click save on my documents, it always gives me the option of, do you wanna save it? Is this right? And I say yes, that's how I know my work's gonna be there later. So when I save 
my website, it's asking me to make a web address. This web address is what you are gonna turn into me. So it's always gonna have the sites.google.com and then whatever I add on there. So I'm just gonna put Angela's portfolio and see if that works. Nope, somebody's already got it. So that's okay. Angela Macias portfolio. Okay, that one's available. So I'm gonna hit publish. And now that will be my web address. I wanna point out something very important to you before we wrap up. If I'm gonna go turn in my portfolio on Blackboard so that my instructor can see it, I am not gonna copy this because your website has two entryways. The back entry is for you. That's where you can make changes. You have access to this menu of options where you can delete things and change things. This is the back end. This web address doesn't mean anything, okay? If I give this to somebody, it won't work. They won't be able to see anything. So when I wanna share it with people, I have to make sure I publish. It's gonna ask me, um, oh, you've already saved it basically, that's fine. So now I can go and I can share it, okay? Copy published site link. So now this is the link that I need to turn in. I'm gonna show you again so you see where I got it. Up here in this little paperclip looking thing, I'm gonna click that and this is the link that I need to share and turn in on Blackboard. You also need to be very careful that everything on your drive that you have saved is uh, available for people to see. Uh, if it's not made public where anybody can view it, then it might not really um, be visible to me. So we have to watch that. You might wanna log out of your device and then log back in, okay? So I'm gonna show you, um, if I went ahead and I put something in here, okay, it's gonna add this to my portfolio. What I wanna do is I wanna log out and then come back and see, is this something I can still view? If not, then I need to go into my Google Drive and I need to click that file and make sure that anyone who has access to the link can view it, okay? Share um, is option that I can select and that's available. Uh, and that's something you'll have to go back and do later if it's not visible to the public, okay? So make sure you're aware of that and log out, look in a different computer maybe even, and check your link and make sure everything's visible. A lot of times people create their Google sites and they link things to it, but then when I go back and look, I can't see it still. Okay, so you wanna make sure that everything on your drive is marked as um, anyone with the link can view it, and then you can put it there. That's the easiest way to make sure that your site works, so try this out. If it works for you, great. Um, I hope that you, have a good time making your site and you get some experience that you can use in your future classroom as well. A lot of teachers use things like this to run their own classroom websites, which is really helpful. So try it out. Give me um, an email if you have any questions or need some help. Good luck.